Welcome everyone. I'm here with composer Ben Gaunt and comedian Sean Morley to talk about their collaboration on a very unique video for Ben's composition for alto flute, Disquieting Spell Sphere. So very intriguing collaboration. So why don't I start with Ben. Uh, ben, could you tell us a little bit about the piece? It's a piece for alto flute, very intriguing title, Disquieting Spell Sphere. Could you tell us a little bit about it? <laughs> Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, kind of early 2019, up until about mid 2020, I was writing a series of pieces that I called Spell Spheres. Um, and uh, the idea behind this was I used isorhythmic techniques, um, messian like, I guess, um, but used it for every single parameter. So, every single parameter could be kind of wrapped up in these circular, uh, these circular techniques. Um, and the way the piece worked, and all of these pieces worked, is I um, I had these cycles, cycles of pitch, of rhythm, of events, speed, dynamics, anything. And the piece ends when all of those cycles end. Um, so that's kind of how these pieces work. And they were an experiment um, in writing music a little bit more quickly and an experiment in trying to get to the bottom of the, the fact that I have OCD and how does that, how could I make that work for me in a compositional sense? Um, I guess like previously in the past and it still happens now I'd like wake up in the middle of the night like going oh no that bit's wrong or that kind of thing's wrong or that doesn't fit my my sense of pattern or my sense of how things should be placed and, and so this was a this was kind of like a therapy um, as much as anything a kind of like way of trying to uh, alleviate that or control that um, mm. disquieting um, uh, so that, that that covers the, the sphere portion these kind of like multi-dimensional circles of patterns. and are they all quite short works and they tend to be quite short works and and, and spell kind of um leads into that as well that the that um you often use spell to describe something that's quite short like i, I you know i was i was chancellor for a spell or whatever i was never chancellor <laughs> but you get the idea um and um but but uh, but um spell um also suggests something magical um and um and also suggests order as well so the order being important like the spelling of a, a mm -hmm. of a word like the letters are in a certain order um and so uh it, spell sphere felt like an appropriate word now um sean uh, is a comedian uh but he also does a bit of music as well and and has a, has an interest in music and he released an album uh uh, under the name Angel Funding, if I remember correctly. And we were describing one of, I was chatting to Sean about one of his pieces uh, on there uh, and a particular sound effect that, if I remember correctly, is taken from Super Mario. Was it Luigi's sound effect from Super Mario there, Sean? Something like that. It was from one of the Mario racing games. It was Luigi going over a, a bump and going, wahoo! Yeah, so you took that and you, and you, you sampled that. Um, and I was like, what is that sound? And you were like, yeah, you described that as quite disquieting. Uh, dis uh, sorry, uh, quite disquieting. Um, and so I, I used that word as a starting point yeah. for what was then going to become a collaboration with Sean. Uh, I received a bit of money a while back from Help Musicians, the Fusion Fund, that allowed me to collaborate with, uh, with non-musicians. And so Sean was one of the people I picked. It was quite a wide-ranging collaboration. Um, and I guess this is kind of like an extension to... Uh, uh, an extension to that and um, Sean and I have kind of now collaborated in multiple different ways and he's infiltrated my world of contemporary classical music and I've infiltrated his world as uh, in, in comedian I've dressed up as Fred Durst and done some of the unspeakable things in the in the name of cheap laughs so that's my uh, that's my relationship with Sean and how wow, so you work together beyond this piece yeah oh wow okay so yeah composer comedian um, maybe some people would have thought that was a long time coming, but um, <laughs> really, <laughs> really interesting idea. So, um, was this the first work you did together, or just one of? This is the first work we've done together as me as composer writing a piece okay. beforehand. Um, but I've appeared as a keyboard player, synth player in some of Sean's shows. Okay, before. interesting. Um, and uh, and we're going to work together again and. Um, uh, I hope we have quite a few collaborations because I think it's kind of leading into some interesting results as you've seen, <laughs> if you've seen the video. <laughs> yeah. Um, All of you should definitely watch the video if you haven't already done so. It's, it's three amazing minutes. Um, so I, I guess you composed the work with the idea that it would be, um, that there would be a response from Sean, a comedic yes. response. Okay, interesting. So then, all right, so, handing over to you, Sean. So how did you, 
respond to this new music. I should also just point out maybe before we move on that this is a work for Carla Reese, who's a low flute specialist, one of our featured performers over the weekend. Was there a particular reason that you thought that the alto flute sort of lends itself to comedy or was that just, <laughs> I think was that just chance? Of all the flutes, it's probably the one that least lends itself to comedy. I don't know. There's something kind of slightly melancholic and uh, and doleful about the flute. And maybe it's the sad clown. I don't know. The sad clown of the flutes. Um, but no, I mean, like, really, the reason that I work for, uh, wrote for Alto Flute is because uh, Carla is, you know, one of the best flautists in yeah. the world at this. She's just unbelievable. Um, and it's it's what she wanted me to write for. She, lo she loves that <laughs> instrument. So, you know, who am I going to say? I'm not going to say no to that. So it just sort of, I don't know, the stars aligned and you were writing an alto flute piece and you wanted to bring in a comedian. And so that's how that yeah. happened. Great. It's, yeah. <laughs> these okay. thought processes, like once you start picking them apart, seem ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's go along. Let's go along with that. <laughs> All right. Great. So, Sean, how did you begin to respond to this alto flute work? Well, I run, uh, obviously, because I don't perform live at the moment i run a weekly i guess i'd call it dada collaborative art live stream every wednesday and i've run it every wednesday for a number of months now and the the name of the show is called meme machine and the idea is i'll be creating for the most part images and those images um i will get all the ideas and prompts from whoever logs in and watches um particularly if people want to donate and say why don't you make an image about this i'll write all of that down and we will try to tick off every single idea and prompt um before i go to bed <laughs> <laughs> and what wow. this means is so that i can go to bed at a reasonable time i can't do one prompt per one image i have to cram a lot of contradictory and confusing ideas into a single image um and in the, what you get in the end really is sort of an incomprehensible dada collage that I then just put up online for people to see. But of course, it's incomprehensible to anyone who wasn't watching it. It's just lots of sort of random elements um, existing in, in, in strange juxtaposition to each other. And uh, a few months ago, uh, I took that step up and I made a music video for uh, a small collective in America called the Cowboy Collective, who were looking to make a resurgence of cowboy-based art in the modern world. Uh, and that was quite a, quite a challenge, um, but we managed to do that in a single sitting. And so when Ben was talking to me about, would you like to make a piece to respond to this? I was thinking, oh, well, maybe this will plug into this meme machine idea. However, it proved to be vastly more challenging because uh, at three minutes long, that's quite, for, for making video work, that's quite a lot, but also because the cowboy song had a lot of it had words it had you know you know what the theme is cowboys you know how to lean into that theme visually and thematically but this is just you know it's yeah. a solo flute piece you're not given a lot more than two words to tell you what the the tone or intention is um incredibly abstract um and so filling that up with yeah. ideas <laughs> was uh, hard and in fact the cowboy song was about a minute long, but running it three minutes long, it took me, I mean, I, this, is, this was last night, so it took me from about half seven at night until two in the morning to make wow. that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you played it, did you what broadcast it online and then people responded and all of their ideas mm -hmm. made it in. So this is, this is like the collective response of your audience to the alto flute could be very <laughs> interesting. For yeah, um, there was an interesting <laughs> intermediary step where I didn't want to just take ideas and just dump them in, in no kind of sequence. So I listened through a bunch of times and I tried to divide up the piece into anything that I could call a section. Then I color coded all the sections and then I played the sections separately um, to the viewers and I asked them what does this make you feel how how do you feel about this and in fact um, and then I looked at all their responses and tried to get a kind of overall tone and in fact um, I think I've still got the document so um, mango color was trepidation 
Uh, yellow was jelly behaviour. Um, tan <laughs> was <laughs> wind and sea. Rose was descent. Cerulean was nightmare boss fight. And Violet was the 1970s. That was the main, uh, the the main feelings people got. Wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, what was really quite, quite disparate ideas, aren't they? <laughs> what was really interesting for me to watch this was it was like... Um, it was an insight into how people listen that you never normally get as a composer. Because, you know, people will either come up to you at the concert and go, that was great. Or they'll go, how do you think it went? And you go like, oh, that wasn't so good then. Um, and you, get, you only get very little snapshots of like um, interactions with people. And there's never that much dissecting in a non-academic point of view. Obviously, if you take it to a conference or you're discussing with your students or your teachers or whoever, you do get that level of dissection. But it's not... It's not holistic dissection, it's academic dissection. Um, what was quite nice was to watch Sean's process where he divided the piece up into these little fragment sections, as he's put it, um, and to be unbelievably accurate in the way that I wrote it, it was 99% of the way there that he'd managed to eventually basically work out my, yeah, work out my compositional method, kind of, in, in, in blocks and end up with something that was really accurate. And um, whilst the result is, is so bizarre, this video is so bizarre, the, um, the intentions of the, of the viewers and of Sean were not bizarre. They were like really genuinely trying to get to the bottom of what this piece was and trying to make something tangible out of something that was intangible and okay the end result is even more intangible <laughs> but it doesn't but it doesn't matter like the um the process in itself was really beautiful as, uh, as well i think wow yeah so i mean i guess how might this inform your practice moving forward ben um it's it well i've kind of come to the end of the spell spheres thing anyway and um and what I'm doing now is I'm kind of loosening up the technique a little bit and I'm adapting it and, um, and um, kind of writing in a slightly different way. So that kind of process has already started happening, but it was nice to have this as, a, as just like a, an indication as to how people think and the things that people li listen to like six times and miss out on and I thought was really important. And other things that people pick up on straight away and I thought were... were you know, it, it's, it's it has genuinely changed quite a lot of the way I think about how people respond to my work. So it was quite an interesting thing. And I was on the stream for a long time watching mm. and not really contributing apart from my one contribution of Hollywood Attitude, of which I'm very proud. Um, <laughs> the, um, uh, uh, what is going to change going forward is um, I, I have a whole bank of um, performers that I work with quite regularly. Um, and I, I think some of the time I, I don't really count those blessings. Um, and uh, I think what I've realized is that I can combine me and sometimes Sean and sometimes performers and create something that's really, really unusual um, mm -hmm. all through the process of, of collaboration, chatting and just seeing where things go and being a little bit freer about that. So I've kind of got some plans down the line about how Sean and I might work together again. Um, and for, I don't know, like for visuals to become a really important part of my practice, I guess, mm. going forward. Wow. So you're interested in creating more video work after this? Yeah. Wow. Interesting. So, I mean, I guess that actually takes me to my next question. Um, ben, you're, you're in Leeds, right? You're um, principal lecturer at Leeds Conservatoire. And then Sean, you're in Sheffield. And Sean, you were talking about how this whole project kind of arose out of the pandemic. And that's how you created this meme system because you weren't able to do live stand-up performance anymore. So could you maybe both just speak a little bit to how the pandemic has, has uh, impacted your practice? And I mean, you've already spoken a little bit to it, but just how, you know, this might change things moving forward for you. So maybe let's start with Sean. Well, I mean, it has sort of completely, completely transformed it. Um, I think with live comedy, as an art form, it's kind of unique in that you don't really have an, an artifact because it requires there to be an audience, like the audience has as much part as performance as anything else. It's not, um, it's just not something you can sort of capture and bring online in the same way. A lot of people are doing live compilation shows and people are performing shows, they perform at festivals down webcams. Um, but to me, it's, uh, 
not it's cringe <laughs> it's it doesn't feel very good it doesn't feel good to see something that should be in a live arena just sort of spoken down a webcam so a lot of us have been trying to find just reinvent what we're doing as as comic performers a lot of us with live streaming or people are going into recorded media youtube podcasts everyone has to kind of reskill very quickly mm. um and the reason i think live streaming is becoming like a primary choice is that you've you've attained some of the immediacy of what is good about a live performance um, and i'm trying to channel that into what i'm doing with this collaborative art um stuff because you still people are a part of the process they're not just there's less of a fourth wall than say if i pre-recorded a video of something how many people participated in in uh responding to ben's piece can you do you track numbers in the in the audience I bet I could bring that. One of the joys of everything being online now is that <laughs> there are metrics to be tracked yeah. <laughs> and I can probably bring up that one. Um, so in terms of how many people watched and how many people um, like you. spoke or, or yeah. added something, but let's, let's just do, let's go strictly for who contributed an idea that went in. I can probably pull that up. Uh, so if I go to this tab. I, I do remember looking at the numbers at the time and you, you kind of had like 40 or so on at any one time when I was on wow. the stream. So it was, it was a good size and there were, yeah. there, were, there were ideas that had been contributed in the kind of formal format Sean mentioned before, people kind of like donating and suggesting an idea. But there was a lot of other chat happening at the same time and quite a lot of people asking me questions about the music, which was, uh, which was really nice as well. Yeah, like genuine interest in, in it. And, I guess part of the process was really nice for me while Sean's finding out this data. <laughs> but I'll, just, I'll just cover this awkward silence. So part of, the, uh, part of the, uh, the interest as well for me was people were hearing the track multiple times. They heard the piece maybe, yeah. I don't know, fragmented them together, maybe 40 times, I don't know, throughout the whole process, um, which is so much more than you normally would do with any kind of yeah. contemporary classical performance. Um, and I get this sense that people really understood it quite a lot better than other pieces I've had. For. Yeah. For. yeah, yeah, and, and yeah, that I'd give people credit for in general, uh, general audience. Um, but but also just through the kind of constant listening to it, the constant trying to understand yeah. it and uh, uh, like really getting to the heart of something. That Which is facilitated I, I also by the internet rather than just having, yeah, Carla play it like a, a thousand times. But I mean, I, I find it kind of fascinating what you're saying about your relationship with the audience because you know, sort of the modernist mantras, like we're not supposed to think about how the audience is responding to our music. Um, it's not about that. <laughs> you're kind of, I don't know, you you jumped into like the opposite end of the spectrum where you're like engaging with their sort of visceral <laughs> responses. I mean, like, yeah. Yeah, I'm not really a fan personally of any mantras or isms. They're not my, <laughs> they're not my thing. And I think being flexible is fine. And yeah, okay, yeah, sometimes I do write pieces of music where the piece of music is just for me. And like, if the other, if the audience like it or other people like it, that's great. Um, but I actually do, I really do care what the audience think uh, quite mm. a lot as well. And I don't think that's a problem. I don't think it's necessarily a compromise. Mm. Do you have the metrics? It looks like you have some. I have metrics, yeah. <laughs> something to share. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so about 15 to 25 individual ideas were submitted by people. Um, there was about 40 people watching at most times, but in terms of how much people watched for at least a bit, because it was six and a bit hours, so not everyone yeah. watched the whole way. There's about somewhere between 200 to 250 people popped in. Wow. I mean, which point. is a good audience for a new music concert. So, I mean, I guess that's an, another interesting thing. You're reaching, I mean, Ben, I'm guessing you're reaching a very different audience to the ones who would typically come and hear new music with alto flute and you're engaging with them in a very different way and Sean it sounds like you're also I mean you're instead of just performing you're you're having some some real give and take it sounds like so I mean that that's maybe an interesting thing that's come out of all this <laughs> and it sounds like you're both planning to take this forward in some form and maybe together too right 
Yeah, I mean, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I'm kind of really always open to Sean's suggestions about something to do. And I've already, I've already bugged him saying I'd like to do this again, but with a slightly different angle on things or, or, or whatever. I mean, I'd love to, to be able to pop on the live stream myself and do some Ableton work with, <laughs> with Sean. I don't quite know how that would work, but whether tech would allow it, but whether we could do some live music and live memeing at the same time, I have no, I have no idea. But there's, you know, there's these possibilities that, that, I, I, I think are opening up when, when everything else is locking down, there are possibilities opening up. <laughs> well, maybe that's a good place to end it actually. <laughs> so thank you so much to both of you and everyone go and watch the video. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, <laughs> yeah, a new way of engaging with memes and alto flute. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much to both of you. All right. Thank Bye. you very much. Cool. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Thank you.